What's going on, everybody? It is the one and only Q from Retro Q Gaming, and yes, it is that time of year again. The time that we love and dread at the same time. The one that comes around once every year that I basically just have to laugh at. Now, no, it's not our usual little Game of the Year segment, if you will, but no, it's time for... <sighs> Video Game Awards, or the Game Awards. Now, I really dislike the Game Awards, but I find it interesting to talk about because it looks at kind of the state of the industry, if you will, over the last 12 months or so. You might notice as well that typically in these lists, you'll find something that released maybe at the end of maybe November or December of the previous year, because there's a cutoff date based on that. So don't be surprised if we see something on here. Anyway... The Game Awards. So the list is out of all the nominees, of all the different categories, and all the different games and whatnot. I haven't clicked in, so I don't know anything that's going to be showing up on here. I don't know what, how many categories there are. I don't know the specifics of them. I don't know what games have been nominated. So we're going to find that out together as we go. Now, real quick, I'll give my quick take and my opinion on them as we go too. But also, I do want to mention one thing, the, something that a lot of people seem to forget. Unlike stuff like, say, E3 or Gamescom or stuff like that, those are proper industry expos. Now, the Game Awards is not actually a proper legitimate award show. If you don't know, the Game Awards is created as a paid promotional advertising event, so it is literally a paid advertisement for all of these games included, masked with a little bit of community choice and, well, whatever you want to call it in there too. But yes, remember that that awful Jeff Keighley, who I cannot fucking stand, he created this whole thing. And again, remember, take everything with a grain of salt that you do see in here because it is 100% paid advertisement. Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, as well as many other top-end publishers are involved behind all of this to promote their own products as an actual product advertisement, basically. So keep all that in mind anyway. I Let's go on. We'll look through all the stuff, we'll see what it is. Again, the shill awards, you just completely can disregard them, basically, despite me actually making this video. And Jeff Keighley is a paid shill who I cannot stand. Anyway, let's go. Where are we going? Save the vote now. Nominees. Okay, so let's start. We'll probably have, I don't know, maybe... F it doesn't say exactly how many categories. There's probably, I don't know, 30 or 40. So, game of the year. So this is our first one, Game of the Year. Now, do we have any more extra stuff? So, overall Game of the Year, as you'd expect, recognizing a game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. So games here nominated for Game of the Year include Control, Death Stranding, Resident Evil 2, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and The Outer Worlds. A perfect example, actually, just as I was mentioning, Smash Brothers released last December, which was after the cutoff of last year's event. Now, what do I think is going to win here and what do I think deserves to win here? Well, I'm not going to give my opinion on what I, I believe deserves to win here because there may or may not be zero, one or more than one game on my game of the year list in this. And if there was or if there wasn't, I don't want to tip my potential hand for all of that. Now, having said that, what do I think will win this? Well, because Jeff Keighley, who runs this entire thing, is little gay boy with a... Uh, with Kojima, well, it's going to be Dead Stranding, which I firmly believe probably does not deserve this. <sighs> Remember, he treated him like he was locked in Guantanamo Bay, not trapped in an office, highly paid, highly respected, for two months making a game that he didn't want to make, and in an industry that he didn't want to be in. Boo fucking who, Jeff. Boo fucking who. Anyway. Action game for the best game in the action genre focused primarily on combat. Apex Legends, Astral Chain, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Devil May Cry 5, which I think also launched last December, Gears 5, and Metro Exodus. Now, I think probably Apex will win this. That's my kind of leaning on there. What do I think deserves to win this? I don't know, I'm looking at this list, and everything that I've played or even looked at in this list doesn't really... Nothing screams at me, but I think if any of these should win it, it should probably be Modern Warfare, as cliche as that might sound. But again, I haven't played Modern Warfare, I have no intent to play it. But I think Modern Warfare should probably win it, and Apex Legends will most likely win it. 
action adventure game for the best action adventure game combining both combat with traversal and puzzle solving borderlands 3 control death stranding resident evil 2 the legend of zelda Link's awakening and sekiro shadows die twice now actually hang on are there any more no okay so what do i think will win this um i'm gonna go with it's probably an 80 20 split here i'm gonna go with 80 20 death stranding and 20 borderlands 3 now what do i think should win this well based on everything i have heard and everything yada 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 in the, the public eye and whatnot I think Borderlands 3 would probably win this. I have not played Borderlands 3. I do not know. But, I mean, I've played... In fact, I've only played two games on this list. Uh, one of them absolutely has no contest whatsoever. One of them, I could see being up there. But at the same time, while I do know that many, many people and media and everything just in general loved Resident Evil 2 as it is a great game, Borderlands 3 is probably the more popular more hype of them so realistically i think borderlands 3 should probably win this but i'm going with death stranding because well i'm going with death stranding as what will likely win it because you know kojima and uh, jeff art direction for outstanding creative and or technical achievement in artistic design and animation control death stranding gris sayonara wild hearts should Sekiro Shadows Die Twice and The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Zelda should not be on this list whatsoever. That is an absolutely awful art style and is just absolutely god awful. I can't really talk about Sekiro. I'm not really massively into that art style. I don't think it's anything special, but again, that's me. Sayonara Wild Hearts looks like typical indie game put on there because of, well, indie games and whatnot. Gris, probably the same way, although I have heard a lot about Gris in its art style and art direction too. Control, I am. Control, I could kind of see potentially winning this. It has that whole postmodern aesthetic, and it's also got that little bit of retro Twin Peaks Stranger Things thrown in there as well. And I'm I'm a huge fan of postmodern design. I, I love that kind of stuff. I love them them clean lines, the maybe a little bit of curve here and there too. But a lot of controls design really did it for me, in an art direction style at least anyway. But of course, because it's Kojima and whatnot, I think Death Stranding is going to win this because, well, it's Kojima and Jeff. Now, I think control should win it, but I think Death Stranding will win it. Audio design. Recognizing the best in-game audio and sound design. Modern Warfare. Control, Death Stranding, Gears 5, Resident Evil 2, and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Now, again, we're back in the same old boat here. While I have no doubt whatsoever that Call of Duty Modern Warfare has absolutely stellar, absolutely stupendous production value when it comes to audio in pretty much every way, shape, and form, I have no doubt in my mind that Death Stranding will win this because, well, Kojima and Jeff are little bum boys together. Now, having said that, I didn't find anything especially great about the audio design of Control, except for maybe one section in the entire game where you put the headphones on. If you've played the game, you know the one. But realistically, it's... Uh, oh, there's some good Gears 5 stuff as well. Some real good sound design for a lot of the weapons and executions and whatnot. Some of them feel and sound really good. But, overall, hands down, from everything I've seen, heard, played out of any of these games this year, Resident Evil 2 deserves to win this without a doubt. But, but, again, Kojima, so I think Death Stranding is going to win this because it's fucking laughable with this shill show. Community support. Recognizing the game for outstanding community support, transparency, and responsiveness. Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Final Fantasy XIV, Fortnite, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Now, this is a very interesting one to me because, I mean, I say they're recognizing a game for outstanding community support, transparency, responsiveness. It's very hard to judge something like that because of the nature of patches, patch cycles, things that need to be fixed and whatnot. I find that it's it's very subjective in this way. More subjective than probably any other one in this too. For example, Apex Legends, I believe, has a two-week patch cycle. Or maybe that's Fortnite. I'm 
not going to go 100% on that one. Destiny 2, I have no idea. I care less than zero about that. But Final Fantasy XIV has roughly a three and a half to four month patch cycle. You do get the occasional little maybe hot fixes here or there after a major patch. But then, typically, you'll get your patch, your major patch. You'll get a hot fix maybe a day or a week or whatever it is later. And then, typically, you'll have basically nothing for maybe three and a half more months unless an event kickstarts in somewhere in the meantime and i from what i understand at least tom clancy's rainbow six siege is is pretty pretty up there so community support based on recognizing the game for outstanding community support transparency and responsiveness i am going to go with either Apex Legends or Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. Now, I only play one of these games, and even at that, I very, very barely, barely, microcosmly barely, reluctantly play it. And that, of course, is Final Fantasy XIV. So I can't really... Just for argument's sake, what I think should win this, based on what I've seen in the media and whatnot too, it's probably Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. But... It, it could go either way, 50-50 between Apex and Rainbow Six, in my opinion. Content, oh my god, content creator of the year. Why am I not here? I should win this, by the way. Vote for me. For a streamer or content creator who has made an important or positive impact on the industry in 2019. Jack Dunlop, a.k.a. Courage. Benjamin Lupo, a.k.a. Dr. Lupo. Solon Wheeler, a.k.a. Ewok. David Martinez, a.k.a. Gregov, G-R-E-F-G, and Michael Gresnik, Grez, Gresiek, Gresiek, a.k.a. Shroud. I've only ever heard of one of these people. I've only ever heard of him about two weeks ago when he made the famous jump to Mixer, apparently. I, I think, is that Shroud? I, maybe? I could be thinking of something else completely different. Could be thinking of someone completely different. But... Overall, I have never heard of four of these people. I have no idea about any of their content. Never seen a clip, never seen a gameplay trailer, never seen a video, never seen a stream, never seen anything. I am not going to touch this one at all. Oh my god. I think I went through this whole thing last year as well. Esports coach. The esports coach judged to be the most outstanding for performance and conduct in 2019. Eric Ardren Hogue, Team Liquid, CS No. Nurin Kane Yang, Jang, Yang, it depends on where it is, I suppose. Team Liquid, League of Legends. Fabian Grabs, Lawman, what's that? G2 Esports, League of Legends. Kim Kakoma, Jong Gyung, SK Telecommunications, T1, League of Legends. T oh my god, these people and their names. Tishwan Soksha Merlaz. OG Dota 2, Danny Zonic Sorensen, at least he's a reasonably decent name, Ast Astralis, Astralis, CS Go, I'm, I have to skip this one, I don't know, esports event, recognizing a, <laughs> recognizing a singular, singular event across single or multiple days that delivered a best of class experience for participants in-person fans and the broadcast audience 2019 overwatch league of legends grand final evo 2019 fortnite world cup iem katowice 2019 league of legends world championship 2019 or the international 2019 i don't even know what game the international is or for that matter i don't even know what iem is i know what overwatch is obviously evo is fighting games fortnite is fortnite and obviously lol is lol but the other ones, I, I don't even know. What do I think will win this? I, I'm going with Overwatch because, well, it's just too popular. Um, part of me wants to believe that maybe Evo would win, but I'm going with 80% uh, Overwatch and 20% Evo. Oh my god. This one I might be able to talk about a little bit more. Esports Game of the Year. For the game that has delivered the best overall esports experience to players, inclusive of tournaments, community support, and content updates, irrespective of genre or platform. Now, Counter-Strike Global Offensive from Valve, Dota 2 from Valve, Fortnite from Epic Games, League of Legends from Riot Games, and Overwatch from Blizzard. Now, you know, I'm actually very surprised. When I saw the this topic that said esports game of the year, I was expecting Rainbow Six Siege to be on here. 
but it's not. So that was automatically what came to my mind as the more popular one and all here too. What do I think will be the biggest one on here? Esports game of the year. I want to say... Hmm. I think Overwatch will win this. I don't know if Overwatch should win this. I don't know anything about the pro scenes and any of this or esports or anything. So I'm just going to go with Overwatch for what should win it and what will probably win it. There you go. Oh my god, we got more of them. On the next one too. Esports host. The best host or commentator of esports events both in venue and or broadcast in 2019, irrespective of game or language. Oh my god. I'm sorry, Icelandic chick. I'm probably going to murder your name. Effie... So <laughs> Sacha's de Portier. I give up. Alex Machine Richardson, he has a normal name. Paul Red Eye Shaloner, he has a normal name. Alex Golden Boy Men. <laughs> I'm not laughing for the Golden Boy. I'm not laughing. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, Duan Candice Yu Shang. Okay. I've heard of one of these people ever, and the only reason I know Golden Boy is because he was on AEW, and, and, he was actually decent. He was actually a decent commentator. Golden Boy, you have my vote for this one. Not my literal legitimate vote, because I'm not going to vote for this paid chillery, but you have my, my camaraderie vote here, Golden Boy. Alex Mendez, I salute you. Hats off. You come back to AEW Dark or something like that. Join our boy, Tony, and let's do this. Esports player. The esports player judged to be the most outstanding for performance and conduct in 2019, irrespective of game. Again, this is just going to be lost to me. Kyle... Bugha Geersdorf, Fortnite. Lee Faker Sang Hyok, League of Legends. Luka Perks Perkovic, League of Legends. Alexander Simple. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to give him that. I'm not going to give him the satisfaction. S1 Impel, Kostilev, CSGO. And J Sinatra 1. Overwatch. That's what happens when you draw stuff out. I have to skip this one. Yeah, oh my god, esports team. Come back to the games! Recognizing an individual esports team judged the most outstanding for performance and conduct in 2019. Astralis, CSGO, G2 Esports, League of Legends, OG, Dota 2, San Francisco Shock, Overwatch World League? Maybe? Team Liquid, CSGO. Okay, um... I'm going to go with whoever has won the most this year. I don't know who that is, but yeah. Finally, we're back to games. Family game. For the rest... No, no. For the best game appropriate for family play, irrespective of genre and platform. Luigi's Mansion 3, Ring Fit Adventure, Super Mario Maker 2, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and Yoshi's Crafted World. My god, it's, it's literally five Nintendo exclusive games. Holy shit. Uh, what do I think will fit on here? I am going to go with either Ring Fit Adventure or Super Mario Maker 2 will win this. What do I think should win this? It's probably a 60-40 tie. Maybe like a 55-45 tie. I think Super Mario Maker 2 should probably win this. Followed closely by Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers isn't for everyone. It's not the best family game. But it's popular and it's kind of easy to pick up and play. But I, I really think Smash should not win this. I think Super Mario Maker 2 should win this. Fighting game. For the best game designed primarily around head-to-head -head combat. Dead or Alive 6, Jump Force, Mortal Kombat 11, New Samurai Showdown, or Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I don't know why Smash Bros. is on here. It's a party game, not a fighting game. So from what I've seen over all of the year if you will i think dead or alive 6 should probably win this from what i hear and what i see around everywhere uh sorry yes i think dead or alive 6 should win this but i think smash brothers is going to win this it's pretty much a shoe in if you ask me fresh indie game presented by subway eat fresh indie games every day all day <sighs> again paid chillery remember there was a samsung one and i think some other one up there too 
recognizing a, a new independent studio that released its first game in 2019. Zaum for Disco Elysium, Nomada Studio for Gris, Dead Toast Entertainment for my friend Pedro, Mobius Digital for Outer Wilds, not to be mistaken for Outer Worlds, Mega Crit for Slate Aspire, House House for Untitled Goose Game. This is this is a close one. Now, I haven't played any of these games, but I've heard of many of them, and I've heard about the praise for many of them. I've heard Disco Elysium getting like 10-10, 10, 10, 10 out of 10, and 5 out of 5 and stuff. Gris is one of those games that's praised for its, its indiness and its art and whatnot too. My Friend Pedro is just supposed to be a really fun game. Outer Wilds, I've only heard one or two small things about. Never heard of Slate Aspire in whatsoever, or Slate Aspire. But I think Untitled Goose Game is probably going to win this. That game blew up and set the world on fire for like a week, or four days, or something like that. So, what do I think should win this? Probably Untitled Goose Game. I can't really talk about that. But what do I think will win this? Un Untitled Goose Game. Game Direction, awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. Control, Death Stranding, Resident Evil 2, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, and Outer Wilds. Strange game direction, you would have think they put like Outer Worlds or something on there. But anyway, what do I think should win this? I don't know, I've only played two of these games. I don't I definitely don't think Control should win it. Absolutely not. Maybe Resident Evil 2. I don't know about Sekiro, Outer Wilds, and, well, Death Stranding. Now, the game should probably not win any awards whatsoever. But, what do I think should win it? Resident Evil 2. What do I think will win it? Absolutely, Death Stranding. Because, well, Kojima and little boy Jeff Keighley. You know how it is. Games for Impact. For a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. Concrete Genie, Gris, Kind Words, Life is Strange 2, and Sea of Solitude. Now, Sea of Solitude... No, why am I saying Sea of Solitude? I don't even know. Is that even out yet, actually? I'm not even sure. It must be if it's on this list. Life is Strange 2. If this was Life is Strange 1, or even before the storm, yeah, I could see that. I believe it. I believe I voted for it maybe like last year, or the year before, or whatever. I've not voted, but gave my vote of confidence for it. I don't think Life is Strange 2 should win this whatsoever. Maybe, Maybe I'm just missing it. Because I'm playing it episodically as it comes out. And the huge, massive, protracted gap between episodes. It just completely takes me out of the experience. I lose emotional connection to the story. I lose emotional connection to the characters. I forget some of the stuff that happens and whatnot too. And it just takes away from the impact so much. So maybe that's it. I had the, the benefit and the luck of playing Life is Strange and Before the Storm for eight days consecutively. So that worked really well. One episode a day. Back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Is that it? I think it was. Kind words, I don't know anything about. But I think Gris is going to win this. Based on what I know about and, you know, the little bit. I think Gris will win this. With the possibility of Sea of Solitude also winning this. But I think Gris has a better chance. Independent game. For outstanding creative and technical achievement in a game made outside the traditional publisher system. Baba is You. Disco Elysium, Katana Zero, Outer Wilds, and Untitled Goose Game. Now, see, it says creative and technical achievement. Define creative. Define, or define a creative achievement. Define a technical achievement. Untitled Goose Game is by no means a technical achievement. Is a creative? Absolutely. But Disco Elysium, I'm going to have to go with because, one, it's one of the two games I know on here. And that's about it. I think Disco Elysium should probably win this from everything I've heard about it. I think Untitled Goose Game will probably win it. Mobile game. For the best game playable on a dedicated mobile device. Call of Duty Mobile, Grindstone, Sayonara Wild Hearts. I didn't even know that was a mobile game when it was listed in one of the other ones earlier. Sky Children or Sky Children of Light and What the Golf. Now <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to go a bit stranger. When I was reading this, I was thinking Call of Duty Mobile will probably win this. And at at first I was thinking it probably deserves to win this. However, I've seen some stuff for What the Golf and it's pretty damn hilarious. I think What the Golf should maybe win this, but I think Call of Duty will win this. 
Multiplayer game. For outstanding online multiplayer gameplay and design, including co-op and massively multiplayer experiences, irrespective of game genre or platform. Apex Legends, Borderlands 3, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Tetris 99, and Tom Clancy's The Division 2. Now, I think this one should go one of two ways. I think either Apex Legends or Borderlands 3 will win this. And... I want... <laughs> You know, see, here, I'm just going to blow everyone's mind here, okay? This one is a 40-30-30 split. If, no, not even. It's a 40-35-25 split. Tom Clancy's The Division 2 is nothing new. It's just a repeat of Tom Clancy's The Division 1, which is just a copy and paste in their own version of Borderlands 2. So, that gets completely eliminated. Call of Duty Modern Warfare is more of the same. Completely cut. Apex Legends, while it is, uh, what do we call it, the massive current hotness genre of Battle Royale, it, sure, it might do a little bit of things a little bit differently, like they all do. So I think Apex gets a 25% chance of winning this. Borderlands 3 gets the 35% chance of winning this. Wait, is that right? Number-wise? Yes, gets the 35% chance of winning this. Because while it is probably just more of the same from Borderlands 2, Borderlands 2 set the standard. Borderlands 2 set the standard that every other company has been trying to replicate and fail in the last seven years. The Division, The Division 2, Destiny, Destiny 2, so many other games out there. They're all trying to be Border Anthem, remember that game that just completely flopped? They're all trying to be Borderlands 2. So, I think Borderlands 3 can probably build on that. And it has a decent chance of winning this. But, as I said, I'm going to shock everyone. I think Tetris 99 probably deserves to win this. Not only... See, it's a Battle Royale game, to an extent, of course. So, you could say, oh, that's a Battle Royale game. They're all the same. They all this, that, and the other. Tetris isn't... Tetris... Well, Tetris is a battle... A battle... A Battle Royale game. Tetris is a Tetris Battle Royale game. That's creative AF right there. And to be creative and bring the outs to essentially be outstanding online gameplay between 99 people in Tetris. It says it here, including design and overall gameplay, multiplayer. I think Tetris has the best chance of winning this. And I think Tetris should win this. Wait, did I say... No, I can't remember who I gave the, the best chance of winning, but I think Tetris should win this. Even though I have no interest in Tetris 99 whatsoever. Narrative. For outstanding storytelling and narrative development... And narrative development in the game. Okay. A Plague Tale Innocence, Control, Death Stranding, Disco Elysium, or The Outer Worlds. Now, I don't think Control had a good story or a good narrative whatsoever. I think that was pretty poor in that regard. I don't know anything about Plague Tale Innocence or Disco Elysium. However, I have played and completed The Outer Worlds. I will vote for The Outer Worlds. Out of the two games on this list, it was the better one in a narrative design, as well as pretty much every other way, and Outer Worlds was much better than Control. But Dead Stranding is going to win this because, well, it's Dead Stranding, and it's Kojima, 69 out of 10, a Kojima masterpiece. Bullshit, if you ask me. Ongoing game, awarded to a game for outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves around the player experience over time. Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Final Fantasy XIV, Fortnite, and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Now, this is pretty much what I said earlier in my, my previous topic a couple, couple of sections back. I think Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege is going to win this, and I think it probably should win this. That's all I can say. Oh, performance. This is going to be good. Do we have any more? We don't. Okay, performance. Awarded to an individual for voice for voiceover. I was going to say voice overacting. For voiceover acting, motion, and or performance capture. Ashley Birch for Pervati Holcomb in The Outer Worlds. I actually completely forgot that was her. Courtney Hope as Jessie Fadden from Control. She actually looks like her, doesn't she? Uh, Laura Bailey, the Bay herself. Laura Bailey as Kate Diaz from Gears 5. Mads Mikkelsen as Cliff from Dead Stranding. Matthew Porrett as Dr. Casper Darling in Control. That's amazing he's on there. If you don't know who that is, that's Alan Wake. 
That is the voice of Alan Wake. That's him. That's that's brilliant. And obviously that's what he looks like. That that's fantastic. It's great that he's on this list. Um Norman Reedus as Sam Porter Bridges from Dead Stranding. Now, okay, as much as I want to fanboy out. Oh, also, it, it's such a shame that uh, James McCaffrey isn't on here because that's the voice of Max Payne. He had a small, small part in, in Control as well. He was the, direct, the previous director. But as much as I want Matthew Porretta to win this... <laughs> Just because, as much as I want. I don't think he deserves it for the acting and the quality and his performance. I just want him to win it because. But as much as I want him to win this. First of all, Courtney Hope does absolutely not deserve to win this. Uh, Jesse Fadden from Control was, was an awful performed character. Uh, Pravati was decent. Ashley Birch. Pravati was decent. But, Jesus, I'm just looking at Courtney Hope staring at me. She's actually really good looking. I just, I see it now. But overall, who do I think? I think Mads Mikkelsen will, I don't know about either of their performances in Death Stranding, because obviously I haven't played it. But there's a reason why Mads Mikkelsen is a higher profile actor than Norman Reedus. You can say what you want about The Walking Dead or Boondock Saints or whatever. That's about it. Mads Mikkelsen is Mads Mikkelsen. He was a James Bond villain. Norman Reedus was a Boston brother. A Boston brother. He was checking his fucking pockets for a car parked in the yard. See? There's a bit of a difference between Mads and Norman. Who do I think is going to win this? Norman Reedus. Who do I think should win this? Mads Mikkelsen. Oh, and why do I think Norman Reedus? Well, because the main character of Kojima's game. And he's Kojima's one of Kojima's best friends, basically. Role-playing game. For the best game design with rich player character customization and progression, including massively multiplayer over massively multiplayer experiences. Disco Elysium, Final Fantasy XIV, Kingdom Hearts 3, Monster Hunter World, Iceborne. Mm, oh yeah, that did come out actually. Yeah, I was gonna say it's not out on PC until January. And the Outer Worlds. Now, from what I understand on this, this could go one of two ways. This will probably be 50-50 between Disco Elysium and and the Outer Worlds. Now, Final Fantasy XIV does absolutely not deserve to win this. They just launched earlier this year their new expansion pack, which is Shadowbringers, version 5.0 and above. And it is the, many people have been praising it, but it's the absolute worst expansion I have played. Probably, yeah, it is, definitely. I'm thinking back to Heaven's Word. I'm thinking back to Stormblood. But this one is absolutely the worst expansion ever. Not to mention, it's completely gimped and dumbed down the game to an arguably unplayable, the worst quality experience of the game that I've ever, ever played. And I've been playing since 1.0. Since the first original closed alpha test of 1.0 in 2010. The start, I think it was like January or February of 2010. That is how long I've been playing Final Fantasy XIV for. So, Kingdom Hearts 3, I haven't actually played, but it was very, very much forgotten about two days after launch from the rest of the internet. Monster Hunter World Iceborne, it didn't seem to set the world on fire, no pun intended, because it's, you know, ice and whatnot. As much as regular Monster Hunter World did, in fact, I've seen very, very little about it post-launch. So, I'm going to go with 50-50 Disco Elysium and 50-50 The Outer Worlds. I don't know why I said 50-50 on both of them. What do I think deserves to win this? Well, I've only played two games on this list, The Outer Worlds and Final Fantasy XIV. So out of what I've played, The Outer Worlds should win this one. But I think it'll be 50-50 between Outer Worlds and Disco Elysium. Score and music. For outstanding music inclusive of score, original song, and or licensed soundtrack. Cadence of Hyrule, Death Stranding, Devil May Cry 5, Kingdom Hearts 3, and Sayonara Wild Hearts. Well, I have played no game in this list, but I'm going to go with what probably should win it would either be Cadence of Hyrule or Kingdom Hearts 3. The main reason I say that is... Square Enix, with their music from like Final Fantasy and whatnot too, coupled with some of the high-profile music from Disney stuff, it's generally top-quality stuff, so I would expect more of the same in Kingdom Hearts. However, with Cadence of Hyrule, it's going to have that Zelda style, a lot of Zelda influence, and it's going for Zelda-style music, which is fantastic. So I think 50-50, one of those should win it. But of course, because it's a Kojima game, Kojima and Death Stranding are going to win this one. Sports and racing game. 
for the best traditional and non-traditional sports and racing game. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, Dirt Rally 2.0, eFootball Pro, Evo- e Pro Evolution Soccer 20. Did they change the name of it? Didn't even know that. F1 2019 and FIFA 20. Hmm. What do I think will probably win this FIFA 20? I don't even know what I see. I can't really comment on this one. It wouldn't surprise me if FIFA won both of, or if FIFA won it and maybe if it should win it. I don't know. Dirt Rally, I hear, is fairly polished. FIFA, I hear, is an absolute disaster. Crash probably is just too niche and whatnot to, to win this. So I'm just going to go with that one. Do we have any more on here? Strategy game. Be- how, many, how far down are we on the list? Oh, we're just at the bottom. Strategy game. Best game focused on real-time or turn-based strategy gameplay, irrespective of platform. Age of Wonders Planetfall, Anno 1800, Fire Emblem Three Houses, King... Or, I was going to say Kingdom Hearts, Total War Three Kingdoms, Tropical Six, and Wargroove. Now, I've only played one game on this list. I want to... I've been keeping up very closely with another one because I want to play it, but I've just never got around to buying it and doing it. But overall... Fire Emblem is going to have to be my vote because it's the only one I've played on the list. The other one is Wargroove. That's the one I'm, I'm looking at and whatnot too. What do I think will win this? Either Fire Emblem or Total War. Total War, I've been in and out of the Total War series since it started. And Total War has always been some of the highest quality strategy games ever made. Not, not everyone is the masterpiece. Not everyone is the is the the game of the year and whatnot too. Not everyone is the new best thing in strategy, but they're always so very high quality. And yes, some of them have been the the, the top quality, the gold standard for the next few years until something else topples it. So it has a very, very high quality pedigree. But I'm going to go with, I think Fire Emblem should win this and... I think Total War will win this. But Fire Emblem maybe has a good chance. I want to go maybe 75-25 in in those ones. VR and AR game. For the best game experience playable in virtual or augmented reality irrespective of platform. Asgard's Rat, Blood and Truth, Beat Saber, No Man's Sky, or Trover Saves the Universe. Now, I think No Man's Sky will... I, I don't think No Man's Sky should be put on this list, even though they only added in VR obviously this year, but I don't think No Man's Sky should be on this one. I think Beat Saber, from what I understand, will win this, and I think Beat Saber, from what I understand, should be the winner of this one. But that's it. That's that's it. We have our end of our little shill segment here. That is the Game Awards. I'm not going to drag this one out too much, so I'll just say let me know in the comments section below about what your thoughts on certain ones are, what should win, what will probably win, if there's a specific category or anything that you're interested in, and what do you think about what I think about will win and why and what not to and all on there too. So that's it. We can leave it on here. We'll check back on December 12th or December 13th. I won't make a video about it, but you can find it on pretty much every website out there about who wins what, who cleans up at what, or basically all, what, nine or ten achievements that Kojima does not deserve but walks home with. So that's basically it. So anyway, let me know all that good stuff in the comments section below. Hit the appropriate button to let me know how I did on the video. And while you're at it, why not head on over and hit the subscribe button and even ring the little notification bell. And, you know, while you're at it, why not... Wait, I'm getting a bit tongue-tied here. Oh, yes. Um, granted, getting a notification from YouTube in current year about a new video upload or a live stream or whatever is a whole other story. But hey, at least you can say you tried, am I right? As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the rest of the videos in my channel.